Hi, this is Tammy Whitten from WomenManagingStress.com. And recently on Facebook, I posed a question and one of the greatest responses that people wanted some information about is how to not let the past define you. And this is definitely a really big issue that hits every one of us. For one thing, a lot of us think that if we had something traumatic that happened in our lives, or maybe some great event, that we may be one of a select group of people that that happened to. That may be true. Unfortunately, the fact is, is as life and society has changed, more of us share those awful things in common than what we may think. But despite of how many people may or may not have experienced it, or how many people you've connected to who are survivors, the best way to get over the past actually has to do with how you define that event and the rest of your life. And let me give you some information on that. Um, certain events we put in certain categories. Wedding, good. Baby, good. Divorce, bad. Hurricane, bad. Cruise, good. But for different people, those things mean different things. Even things that we would associate with being something good can be something bad. For instance, a baby. If it's an unplanned pregnancy, not a good thing. So when we're looking at letting the past define us now in the present, one of the biggest things we have to really focus on is how are we viewing it? Just like sunglasses kind of make us look at the world differently outside, the same way that we look at those events is going to define how we view it now. One of the things that happens to us is if something happens to us when we're younger, say 5 or 15 or 25, we will forever look at it through that lens of that age. So to a five-year-old, something happening may be a lot more traumatic than that same event happening to a 15-year-old. And that may explain why when you share some of these things with someone else, they may look at you and think, it's not such a big deal, why is this impacting you that way? Another reason why they may look at you and may not offer you the support that you would like to hear from them is that same event, despite their age and their family, may not mean that same type of thing. So, getting back to not letting the past define you, things to look at. How do you define that event? What age are you looking at that event through? Is that something that you view can be a, a, a spring point for the future? What lessons can you learn from it? Despite anything, the biggest thing you can do is see how that can give you different opportunities. And one of the hallmarks that marks resilient people are those who bounce back from things. I think Steve Jobs has been an example of that, Oprah Winfrey. These people who take something bad that's out of their control that's happened and they make it a great point in the future is how you define that event and what you think you can get out of that that will make you a better person. Now I will say working with this is a lot there's a lot to it, and it's sometimes difficult to do on your own. So this may be something you really want to reach out to a local mental health professional to help you with, or maybe someone in your church that you trust who is in that leadership position or is trained to do that type of thing if you're finding yourself stuck on a brick wall here because some of these things can be really, really hairy, scary, traumatic things from your past. However, my message to you is that there is hope, it can be overcome, and it doesn't define your life. And one of the starting points for making that change is how you define it.